adult audience. Offline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline. 1 800 Love 191. With Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Hey, it's the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Fax number 310 The Dub Pistols, a uh, English pop band, will uh, be our guest tonight, although they're just a little bit lost. Actually, uh, Barry Ashworth, I think, who's the leader of the band, is the only one coming in. But. Uh, I think he'll be in soon. It's a little tough to find the yeah. Love Line studio. Oh, yes. And uh, people get confused. And, by the way, and I hope they're listening, rarely give themselves any padding. The people are coming. It, it seems to me. Yeah. So the deal is, is if you're half hour away, the show starts at 10, and you leave at 9... 29, 9.30, or 9.31. Ain't going to work. You're only going to get here when the show starts. <laughs> Maybe we ought to have a new that, policy. That's with a stiff wind at your back. Maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we ought to have a new Everybody policy. Everybody feel free to leave a half hour earlier than they need to. Lord mm-hmm. knows there wouldn't be anybody here when you got here. And Lord knows uh, we leave at least half hour early for everything. Oh, at least, Drew. Maybe, maybe a couple hours. Oh. Anyway. Uh, he and they will uh, roll in here when they find the studio, and uh, until then, we'll get to the phones. Nick. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. Um, I was just uh, calling about what Dr. Drew said about a couple weeks ago. What did I say? Um, you said you were talking about general awards that they are. It was n- new studies had led to the conclusion that they do go away. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of my friends... On, on men and women, or just men? Yeah, that they eventually sort of burn... They sort of burn I wanted them. about the men. Yep, same. Uh, is it for men and women, or...? As far as I understand, yes. Okay, so my question is, uh, my friend has it, and he didn't believe me when I told him, but what I, what I wanted to know is if he had sex with the same person, like that had him, you know, and they kept on giving it back and forth to each other, would they ever go away? Yes, they'd still go away. They'll go away. Yeah. Because once they go away for, for on you, for you, uh, it's because your body's immune to that? I, I don't know that that necessarily is true, but I, I believe that may but be true. doesn't the body sort of work that way with other things it yes, gets it rid does. of? I mean, like yes, when you're a kid, you have chicken pox, and then you can't get chicken pox again? It works that way with other viruses, and warts is a virus. So when, yeah. Well, who's the smart one now? Go ahead, Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. So once they... Uh, once they go away, you can never get them again like the chicken pox? No, that's not true at all. Because you may not be able to get that particular subtype, but there are hundreds of subtypes. So you can get them again. Right. But what if... Well, no. That was Forget a retarded the, hypothetical. Uh, all right. My head's going to explode. Let's move on. <laughs> Jana? Yeah, hi. Hey. Um, I'm calling because my girlfriend broke up with me today because she wants to kill herself. And uh, she doesn't want to leave me behind. Um, I'm calling because I want to know when and how I should intervene to stop her from doing this. She broke up with you today? Yeah. Um, she, when, when did she say she was going to kill herself? Um, she said she doesn't give herself more than two months <laughs> because she said she wouldn't make it to our six-month anniversary. Isn't she happy? <laughs> Oh, baby. How long? Two, uh, two drama queens. So you guys have been going out for four months. We've known each other for two years. Oh, let me try that one one more time. So you guys have been going out for four months? Yeah. Okay. And were you living together? Uh, <laughs> well, she lived here on the weekend. <laughs> How old is she? Um, she's going to be 19. Has she attempted suicide before? Huh? Has she previously tried to kill herself? Yeah. How many times? Hold on a second. Drew, isn't it funny about uh, human nature and you especially how you have to reword your question the second time I each and every time? I learned that the hard way. No, yeah. no, but see, you usually dumb it up. No, I just the try second it, time I try around. To, I just try to make it more clear. Yeah, you, your first your first go round on this one was real clear. But here's what my thinking on this one: uh, she wants some drama. I better use the word kill. Oh, okay. Because she she responds only to True. dramatic Please. language. Seriously, that's what uh, went through my head. Okay. Sorry, Adam. That's all right. 
I, I was my, I was more leveled toward Drew than it was toward you. I just think it's interesting. No, I hear Drew repeat himself night after night after night, and he always rephrases it just a little bit. But there's usually a per. I usually am purposeful in how I'm rephrasing it. Really, yeah. I give it a little thought. Okay, about a beat. Okay, so she has she tried to kill herself before? Uh, yes, yeah, she's she's had a really traumatic life. Oh yes, full has, of yes, full of drama. Has had Jana. You've had one too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. So. And are you bisexual? This does not sound like the work of a, a lone lesbian. So there must be some bisexuality in you. Yeah, oh. I'm bisexual. Or stripping, something like that. Are you doing a little stripping? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> not that out of the question. <laughs> uh oh. So are you, are you living away from home now? No, I still live with my parents. Mm. And um, do you have any way of, uh, uh, you have a way of contacting your ex-girlfriend, right? Yeah. And did you want to break up with her or did she just dump you? Uh, we spent, basically she spent all night crying uh, because she, uh, you know, it's a cry for help, you know. Right. Mm, no. It's not? No. Um, Why not? This is, a, this is an acting out. This is a, 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 a display. Right. Yeah, this is not a cry for help. <sighs> All right. This, this like, can you let her me. bend a cliche just a let, little bit? Let me ask you something. She's been psychiatrically hospitalized before, correct? <laughs> no. What did they do with her? <laughs> what? She won't talk to anybody. What happened let the first time she tried to kill herself? Right. Uh, no. She just woke up. <laughs> it so, didn't work. So nobody knew about it? No. So nobody's ever found out about her behaviors? <laughs> well, her friends know. Her parents just don't care. All right, okay. Well, here's what: if you want, if you truly want to help, she yeah. needs some some professional intervention. This is not going to get better without something very structured and very aggressive. It's, it's like, would we just take her to a hospital? If she is threatening suicide, if you if she has a plan and you believe that that uh, something is imminent, don't even bother with the hospital. Call the police. Oh, uh, if please, you can get her to a hospital, well, no. I'll, I'll tell you when I'm in charge, Drew. Yeah, I am going to. Uh, I know I've had a lot of hair brain, hair brain uh, schemes on this show, but this is one that just popped in my head. Ah. I am going to have the police A team and the police B team. You understand? Yeah. Golden maroon, I'll call them because uh, it's important to give them colors when you're talking about a sort of a, a combat situation. Yeah, you know, when you're squads, you have you have different teams. Now, here's what I'm going to have: the B team. They're going to handle all the chicken ass that the regular cops deal with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All this d domestic nonsense, all the, the teenagers who are killing themselves, all this stuff that I don't want the fully loaded cruisers, the guys with the shotguns and the years of training, uh, the guys who uh, were this close to making the SWAT team who are wearing the Kevlar vest. I don't want these guys rolling on every one of those calls. What do you think of that, Drew? That seems totally appropriate. Why not send the meter maids out on these things? Mm -hmm. Can't we put these a holes to work for us at some point? You at one point had a team of uh, like social workers in flak jackets and squad cars. Remember that? Anything but have the same police that I would call yeah. to protect me. Not because I'm going to kill myself. Not because I'm beating the crap out of my girlfriend. But because there's someone trying to kill me. I want them freed up. The, see, to me, it's like. They do not send a C. Everett Coop out to scrape people off the sidewalk in the ambulance. Yeah. They send it, guys that have some training, yeah. but they're not uh, doctors. Yeah. They do not have uh, 20 years of college under their belt. They're not the best and the brightest, but they do their job. They yeah. show up, they get the guy. Then when the guy needs the heart transplant, they call in the big guns. Yeah. We need this in policing. Mm. Do we want the best and the brightest fully armed showing up at, a, at apartments at noon and trying to talk drunken guys out of beating the crap out of their girlfriend for the 15th time? This is a good plan, Drew. I'm going to work on this one. Okay, I'm not. All right. She got it. She's called one of those uh, suicide. Should she call? No, why don't she call one of these suicide hotlines and see what they say to do with her? Yeah. It couldn't hurt. Come on. The, uh, the point, let's make the message clear. But though. let's not call the cops again. If, if if something is imminent, call the police. If it's still something serious, she has to get professional help, and you have to find a way to get her there, whether it's calling some other adult or teacher or parents or notifying somebody who has the authority to get her where she needs to be. Okay. Rob. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Good. 
Good. Um, I've got two quick questions. Can I ask both? Sure. All right. First one, is it uh, common to get uh, pimples on your penis? Yes. It is common? Yes. Okay. Do they, I mean, does it stop after, I mean. Maybe. After I get a little older, maybe? Perhaps. It should. You go to the gym. Do you see a lot of guys with pimples on their penis? I don't really look. What's your other question? Oh, please. You do so. He just wants to linger on this one for a while. But let's. what's your other question? Uh, the other one, I'm um, considering trying ecstasy, and I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit about it. Side yeah. effects, maybe. One of the most dangerous drugs we um, really? see out there. Yeah. Oh, really? Because a lot of people do it, and it doesn't seem yeah, to screw them that. too much. That, and i got to tell you, I've been saying that Are for a Are drugs long... really just not that dangerous? All right, let me make this statement, Drew. You tell me true or false. It's not the actual drug or the occasional use of the drug that is that dangerous. It is the people that get the momentum with the drug and turn it into more of a lifestyle. With some drugs, that is absolutely true. With the drugs that, that is not true, it, the hallucinogens, the inhalants, the LSD, the ecstasy, those with a single use, you can have permanent changes. All right, but think about all the millions of Americans who have dropped acid on a handful of occasions and really have no discernible effect from it. Yep. Okay. Rob? Yes. Here's my concern with any drug. I think you could probably do X and it wouldn't kill you. Okay. On the other hand, you may really get off on it. You may really enjoy it. Would you shut no, up for a second? That's not the thing with that. That's not the thing. Let's just shut up. <laughs> Lovey, <laughs> you go to the hut and tell the professor. <laughs> Drew got a little uh, Gilligan's Island flashback <laughs> chuckle there. Oh, all right, maybe it's not. But here's my concern with all drugs. You do them, you like them, you're, you're 20, you're stupid, you don't have anything going on, and you get into it. Head first, the, but ecstasy is, is not is, not you. Per se, ecstasy Robert, is yeah. one of the ones that that's not the issue, is because it's not likely to happen. It's very unusual to see ecstasy addiction, but it's very common to see very bizarre and devastating neurologic syndromes from it. But usually, isn't it a higher percentile, a uh, higher percentage of people who have that neurological condition? Um, wouldn't those be the people that did it more than once, a uh, number of times? Thank you. And C if they like it the first time they do it, they're going to tend to do it a little more often. Categorically not a number of times. Dr. But Drew? Perhaps more than once. All right. Drew? Yeah. Uh, what exactly is in ecstasy? I have no idea. What it's it's MDMA, and it's uh, basically a stimulant like speed that's been altered further to give it hallucinogenic properties. Okay. Then. Oh, you Jesus. Just, did that. We'll pick that call, would you? There you go. Ron. Yeah. You're 35. How you doing? What's going on? You guys are great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, basically, I called tonight to, um, I'm 35, I'm a T6 paraplegic, uh -huh. and I've been married for 11 years. How long have you been paraplegic? Uh, 10. You got a year into your marriage, you became paraplegic? Yeah, one year. Oh, baby. T6 is midway on your back. Midway. So, like, it, that's like, like right here. So, we really don't have, you know, sex. Uh, we haven't done it in about five years. All right. You, you can, though, right? You could. I can, I can sustain an erection with yeah. stimulation. Yeah. Right. But basically, um, I, I, I really, uh, we, I've been staying together, I think, just because of my daughter. She's nine years old, and I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I really don't. Um, me and my wife, we get along, but we don't. There's no love there, and I don't know. Um, All right, Ron. Hey, Ron. Yeah. A little history for us. So uh, you, you've you been a paraplegic for uh, 10 years. 10 years. You, you, you became one at age uh, 25. 20. 25, right. Um, I'm going with either motorcycle or something around the pool. You're perhaps, very good. Perhaps, perhaps even riding the motorcycle into the pool. I'm actually racing motorcycles. I did it for 16 years. Mm. Uh, this is uh, apparently the best way to become a paraplegic. You mm. uh, uh, mean dirt bike racing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened? I hit a tree stump going about 75 mile an hour and mm. broke seven vertebrae in my back. Oh, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and see, the helmet doesn't do anything for that. I mean, it protects the, your bean, but your your it could even be worse in a in a way for your for your vertebra, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I, I'm a complete complete uh, T6 probably. So, how does everything uh, the penis works? Uh, it works, but it no sensation whatsoever from the chest down. I could burn my leg; I wouldn't even know it. Ooh, it's, no, it's, a, it's a spinal reflex that gives you the reaction. Your worst nightmare, Drew. I mean. I mean, uh, Adam, I could, uh, I, have, I haven't masturbated in 10 years. I can't feel it. I have no orgasms. I don't even uh, understand that. <laughs> I, I didn't even hear that. It's a good thing you've been catching up. 10 just years. Just in case. You've been storing up oh. just in case. And, and what, is, what does his sperm do? Reintegrate? 
That's yeah. From a urologist, that it just goes back yeah. in your system. Just absorbs. Yeah. You don't think that's kind of gay, Ron? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, Ron, I, I, you're, uh, now you, why? You see, but you why? Be equating the sex with the lack of love. What? what what's the deal? Well, I'm, I'm not interested. I mean. I have a, oh boy, here we go. I have a little bit of a problem with young girls. I, I like young girls. And I think that may be from something that happened in my past. I have never acted on it, but I think about it. And my wife, me and my wife have both gained a lot of weight. We're not, I'm not interested in her whatsoever. Um, but young girls just do something for me. I mean, I haven't, I mean. So you want to get unmarried so you can go molest young girls? I'm not, I've never wanted. Sure, what kind of allegation is that? That's what he's, that's what he's building well. up to. I don't know. I really don't. Hey, I don't no, think stay that. Stay married. Hey, Ron, well, hold on. It. Oh, are you afraid you're going to do something to your daughter? No, no I'm not really not. I'm not. Hey, but, but uh, hey, Ron, the, well, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, number one, you, you got it. You're hot for, for young girls, but if the orgasm brings you no pleasure, then what is there a payday? I go to a lot of uh, strip joints um, just to just a look and grind dances and things like that just uh feeling you know basically is about it do um do they give you a lap do they have a handicap accessible lap dance area yeah, they do where i go <laughs> that's the vip room wow that is nice yeah. she's talking about what a great country this is you know what i mean i mean you go to some of these other crampy countries in asia you couldn't even get into like the post office in a wheelchair you know what i mean 400 flights of stairs just to mail a letter but here we are we are so progressive that even in the strip clubs we have uh, wheelchair access. Oh, this is fantastic, Ron. Oh, Ron hung up. All right, well, he's probably talking. His wife probably came. I think oh. he should stay married. Okay, but, but but wait a minute, Ron. I mean, Drew, if you can't have a uh, orgasm, or you, he can have an orgasm, but it brings him no pleasure, then why go to the strip club? It, it just proves the point that much of our sexuality is in our brain. Because there's no payoff. There. There's no payoff, and there's even no sort of ultimate arousal. Ten there's years. No feeling of arousal, but there's a fearing, a feeling of sexuality. Ten years with no masturbation. Could you imagine? It's a good thing you've saved up. Can you imagine if the hooker, I mean the uh, stripper at the strip club, uh, accidentally mm -hmm. pulled one off him? That wheelchair would just go flying across. <laughs> the road. It'd be, it'd be propelled. <laughs> He'd probably go all the way home, like a, a trail of sperm, all the way up the street. Like a jet engine. Oh, my God. That was your fantasy. It'd be like one of those uh, water toys, you know, for uh. kids that you pump up. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, Ron. So, what'd you, what'd you do today? I feel bad for Ron, but, geez, and I know, but, uh, try to be better. I, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, Stay I, with it, your wife. I, it, yeah, I, I mean, where she, are you, what are you going to do? She's not complaining, and she's hanging out on behalf of the daughter. Right. I mean, they, they like each other. They just don't have a thing anymore. Okay. It's it's for better, for worse, and your daughter's counting on you. I, I did Rosie today. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Roseanne. Not Rosie. How was it? Sorry. Uh, it, was, um, it, it was an abortion. That's, <laughs> that, that's my... I, I I was fine. I just I just I was sitting out there thinking, what the hell are we doing? Oh yeah. I went on there with uh, my partner Jimmy, and we uh, sort of locked antlers with a couple of uh, female comedians on a sort of he said she said battle the sexes thing, and oh, it's it just nonsense. Another bad TV. Just just total nonsense. It really made me uh, miss and respect our show. Good. And you know that takes a lot. It does take a lot. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, uh, Roseanne was nice, uh, had a laugh, uh, sat up there, but I just thought, what the hell is this world coming to? We're just, I'm just sitting up there making fart jokes, explaining my uh, men are better than women. The audience is, is yelling. You know, there's females in the audience. There's males in the audience. They got them all whipped up and you go finally frenzy. sold out. I just sat up there and I thought to myself, what in God's name is, am I doing here? Is that as here? far a sellout you would go, though? Well, you know, Roseanne is she's a big name. I mean, she's you, got a show. I'll yeah, go but, on it. But, but would you sell out further? And would you do things for uh, like commercials or organizations that you really don't believe in? Or? I did a voiceover for um, Mountain Dew the other week. Really? Oh yeah. Listen, give me a give me a few bucks. I'll, Mountain I'll, I'll Dew. Dig up Mussolini and have sex with him. Mountain Dew. I, I did a Mountain Dew spot. Can we hear it, please? We don't. It's the ultimate ticket for Mountain Dew. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Oh, Drew, you're, you're such a prick. Two tickets prick. to any event in the U.S. See the World Series game, the Vans Warp Tour. Heck, see my show in L.A. Free tickets, hotel, airfare to any event. Where do I find Yankees? Look under 20-ounce caps, especially marked Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Pepsi One, or in bags of Doritos chips. Now go pick me up some Dew so we can play. 
Oh my God! <laughs> I'm I'm ashamed. What an ambush! I am sh ashamed. True, that was such a it was a real like Jenny Jones type ambush you pulled <laughs> on I, me I, there. You've been training me for several years now, so uh, Christ I, Almighty! We but, weren't gonna let this one slide. But no, Anna, but uh, I'm just I'm really disturbed. I mean, I really you're right. Let me say a few. Mountain my, my, Dew. Let me. Now go pick me up some uh, shoes. Oh, so oh, it hurts me to hear that. Don't make me throw a chair through there. Let me let me say a couple of things oh. about, about me in the Mountain Dew spot. First oh. off, Drew, I'm sorry for uh, letting a little of the uh, air out of your uh, hot balloon, oh. but you probably didn't count on me bringing up the Mountain Dew spot right before you dropped the bomb. That. I, I thought you might. sort of ignorance. No, I true. thought I, I I knew I couldn't set up well enough to. Yeah, I know how your mind works, and I thought you'll go right to it. So I, I at least ought to have it ready. But true, you, you understand how horrible you are. I know. I, don't stop attacking me. We try to defend yourself. Okay, I'll get. Did I'll get back to myself. Did you tell me why you did that horrible thing? Like I didn't smell something coming. So what'd you do today? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're so transparent. You're like a lampshade. What's scary right you, you is you didn't see through. I mean, you should have. I told you I did that Mountain Dew commercial, didn't I? <laughs> I asked how far you'd go. We'd have seen you hide it. Here's what happened. Okay, first off, about Mountain Dew. I don't believe Mountain Dew inherently is any worse than any other soft drink. They're all bad. Coke, Pepsi, Orange Crush, whatever it is, Gatorade, although I know Drew likes that when he's vomiting. It's all a bunch of nonsense to me. It's just a bunch of carbonated chemicals. It basically just, it's just there to poison the youth of America. That That's my take on, on yeah. soft drinks in general. Yeah. I personally have disdain for Mountain Dew because I think it's the worst tasting of the group. But I don't think it's any worse inherently than, let's say, Pepsi or Dr. Pepper. I just get so, it makes now, me so sad when Adam starts to rationalize <laughs> Uh, it's just so sad. Listen, here's let me explain what happened. Yeah. My uh, manager and your manager, Howard, called me before I was going on a trip. And he said, we want to put you on a veil for the Mountain Dew commercial. What does that mean, a veil? Oh, a veil. All right. A veil. Let me tell you something about this industry. It's a bunch of idiots, and they want you to audition for everything. And I don't audition for anything because I don't get anything, and I don't care, and I don't have time. And besides, I think I get more stuff by having an attitude and telling them to F themselves. So they said, we want to put you uh, on a veil for this Mountain Dew commercial, which means it's between you and five other guys. And the deal is, is we'll pay you, they'll pay you a few bucks for just saying, uh, okay, I'll, I'll keep that day free, even if they don't use me and blah, blah, blah. So what was my answer when they said, we'll All put right, you sure. on a veil for Mountain Dew? All right, sure. No. Oh, you said no? No, I said, I said no. I don't like Mountain Dew, and I'm not on a veil for anything. If right. they want me, we can talk, but I'm going out of town, and I'm not on a veil. All right. And so I went out of town. And then I came home on Monday, and they said, you know what? They want you. They'll pay you ten grand. You no, go into, you, you go into the uh, studio for uh, two hours, and uh, it's tomorrow. And I said, no, fine. Okay. And I went in and did it. Now go pick me up some shoes right. so we can play. <laughs> right. well, they'll be a, high price, a higher price than the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Than what you were paid uh, uh, for having done this. I'm sure it'll uh, it'll come back and haunt me somehow. Anyway, uh, is uh, Barry here, by the way? Yes. There, there is he. The Dub Pistols. Uh, Barry Ashworth is uh, representing them. He will be in here. We will uh, take a break, and then uh, we'll come back. I'll continue selling my soul. Love Line. Matt and Kroll and Dr. Drew. The phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. Hey there, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew, the backstabbing Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Barry Ashworth is here from the uh, Dub Pistols. The uh, Dub Pistols got themselves a CD out called uh, Point Blank. It's been out for a few months and uh, I think it's selling pretty well, isn't it? Seems to be doing all right, yeah. I'm still here. Is it uh, Got food on the table? How many? Is it uh, gone uh, gold or platinum in, in England yet? No, 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 no. It's just still moving. It's still just selling consistently on the underground in the UK. Was it was it released in um, in the United States and England at the same time? Sometimes they release them there, wait and see for a while, and then bring them here. Yeah, no, it was um, it was kind of it was released probably a couple of weeks after it was out in the UK here. Right. Yeah. We uh, we play the uh, the big song Cyclone off of the the Point Blank CD by the Dub Pistols is one that I think we use as a drop a breaker yes. a liner 
a something or a bumper. Jesus, I named all of them except for the right one. A uh, bumper. And uh, it's a song <laughs> that a I like in a K Rock. Well, you're, well, well, actually, you'll hear what a bumper is when we're done with this uh, segment. We go into a commercial or come out of a commercial, am I right? But let's play the uh, song in its entirety for now. Okay? And then everyone will know who the Dub Pistols are for sure. That was Cyclone from uh, Point Blank off the uh, Dub Pistols. Now, uh, representing the Dub Pistols, Barry Ashworth is here tonight all the way from uh, merry old uh, England. London. I mean London. Uh, Which is England. England. Right. Okay. I haven't done a lot of traveling, so I'm uh, easily easily stumped. I I'm going to ask you the question that we ask uh, everyone from England, and we still have never gotten an answer on this, and maybe it's not answerable, but I'm going to ask you. You know, with the accent, in people with an English accent, they put an A sometimes where the R would be in, in English. The can say word then. I'd say, Give me an English we would say water, and you might say water. 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 <laughs> so that, right. That's more, that's yeah. more a South London thing or a London thing. Yeah, yeah and yeah, you, you take off the R and you put the A there. I, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys that because I, I think that's quaint and that's, uh, we, we need differences. But I'll tell you what pisses me off a little bit. Go on, then. There's a few words that end with an A and you guys put an R. Go on, then. Well, I, let me think. I just uh, heard your last today. name. Well, I have a Clive Barker called me uh, Adam Carolla, and uh, <laughs> well, I heard that's not. I heard uh, uh, sometimes the word spa, like a health spa, becomes a health spa. Okay, and it, there's right. the R gets put on where now my whole thing, and I always yap at Drew about this is there's the A. Here is your golden opportunity. There's that goddamn A you've been harping for the whole time, and you screw it up by putting an R on the Adam end. Carolla. There you go. That was uh, countryman Clive Park. Adam Carolla. Now people in the people in the East do that too. Yeah, a little bit. East United States. It's just slang, isn't it? I mean, it's just like you know, you put your the way you talk is just slang. I mean, um, I'm sure if you were Prince Charles, you'd pronounce it exactly the way that you expect it to be heard. Well, but, that, that may be know. true. The 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 uh, the clearest example of that is uh, there's a Woody Allen movie called uh, Hannah and Her <laughs> Sisters. Right. Good movie. And uh, a friend of mine's uncle from New York said, uh, did you see that uh, Hannah and her sisters? <laughs> and I thought, geez, you took the R and the A and you just swapped them right around, didn't you? And this guy was born and bred in the United States. All right, so we're going to take some uh, calls and, uh, you know the game. You just jump in, make an ass of yourself as best hey, you up? can. Yeah. Alex, you're 16. Yeah, you might remember me. I'm the sick and psychotic uh, one who's my friend slept with my mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, well, now I got another problem. Okay, uh, you know, me and my girlfriend have been sexually active for about, active for about four months. And uh, I was wondering, you know, I'm, I don't have a huge uh, penis, but uh, I got a good five or six inches. But um, I was wondering if uh, if the size of it determines whether or not if she, she will have an orgasm. Absolutely not. She hasn't been having one, really. Well, that's sort of normal for someone of that age. Intercourse, in young women, doesn't typically result in, in that orgasm. Oh, and geez, you know Alex is just uh, sucking down a few wine coolers and crawling on top Get of her. Your tongue. Yeah. I, hey, Barry's 100% right. Women like oral sex. Oh, do they? Uh, Get down there on carpet munch, my friend. Yes, they do. Huh. I can tell Barry's going to have no difficulty with this show whatsoever. Uh, He's already worked the carpet much <laughs> right into the first call. But it's true. Uh, women, he, here's the deal. And, and Barry, tell, tell me if you agree with this. Okay. Women have difficulty telling guys what they want sexually, especially young women. Young women. I think as they get older, they soon tell you exactly what well, they want. And yeah, they when, when they're you 40, they haven't got it. When they're 45, but you don't want to hear it at that point. <laughs> get over here! Stop the carpet, Margie! <laughs> and you don't want to hear anything about that point. But when, they sh when you do want to hear it, they don't want to say anything. And uh, and a and a girlfriend who's fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years uh, old is not going to tell you what to do. She doesn't know, and she may not know. She's twenty though. Oh boy, I'm Alex. Huh. She's lying. She might. She, oh, she is. All right, hey, Alex. Yeah. So you should perform oral sex, but also, uh, you should really wear a condom because. Uh, if if you, if this is the the Anytime. Alex from the call yeah. where the, your friend was uh, having sex with your mom, there there seems to be a lot of chaos here, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. We don't want kids. Yeah, we don't want kids. And don't forget the morning after pill should that condom break. And the condom doesn't go on your tongue. The morning after. Within no, 72 hours, that. get that emergency contraception. I heard they got uh, condoms for women, too. Yeah, female condom. Go ahead and feel free. enjoy. Use that one. Have her put one in her mouth, we, in we her want, ass, we, in her crotch. We you want put a, one on. We want put one on her head. We want an award for opening up a female condom on television and, and examining it. <laughs> right. We'd be jailed in most other countries. Yeah. Do you know I still haven't seen one? I'm 33 and I still haven't seen a female yeah, condom. They're kind of weird looking. They're like uh, rings on end in in a rubber tube. It, it's really... Yeah, it's like two rings, one this way, one this way. Yeah. It, it's really one of the worst inventions since, uh, no, since the beta quiet. recorder. Oh, no. no. Uh, and no uh, okay, listen, Drew. Anytime you come up with a piece of contraception that nobody uses across the board, it's a failure. Emergency contraception? What are you Morning talking after about? after pill nobody uses. Okay, Drew, don't crap on my points. That, that's few different. Girls I've been you know with have used it. it. Huh? Have used the morning the after pill? That, yeah, I mean, I haven't personally, but the girls that I've been with have. Do they have the morning after pill yeah, in England? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the RU46 what yeah. you're talking about. We're talking about just the birth control pill taken a certain way prevents ovulation. It's not as effective as the RU46, but right. it's pretty good. Monica. Yes. Where do you get that RU486 in England? Do you, do you have to go to the pharmacy, pharmacy and just I don't, go I mean, get it? I personally not, don't actually go myself. Right. I know the girls have been there and taken it. But they don't, they don't need a prescription. They make them really ill doing it. They don't need a prescription or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> Monica, what are you doing? You guys are so funny. Hi there, what's up? Hey. Hey. Hiya. Hi. Sorry I left you guys last night. Great spinning, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I got... A really tough one for for you. I'm 30 years old, right? Yeah. I have no problem telling my guys what to do and how to do it and when to do it. Well, we don't doubt that. But uh, lately I had a problem. I cannot have an orgasm. When I have my orgasm, it's in my sleep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How do you guys explain that? I mean, I can make wonderful sex for hours and hours, but I can't come. Then I go to sleep, and an hour later, I wake up shaking like a crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you have a cat? No. no. All right. we well, I'm out of suggestions. What is the accent? Is that Dutch or German? I got a Swedish roommate. Sweet. What, what about Vibra? What, what is your accent? Dutch? Swedish. Swedish. Okay. I guess you should have known what the Swedish yeah. roommate. Monica. Yeah. Hang on. We're going to address, uh, address this. We're going to take a break. Uh, are you big and blonde and buxom? Uh, bacon blonde and boxum. Um, tall, skinny and boxum. Have your batteries run out? I think you confused her. Hold on a second, Monica. Alrighty. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll explain why women can have orgasms in their sleep and why guys can't unless they're 14 <laughs> after this. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? You're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, I'll be right back. Hey, 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 hey. This is Fatboy Slim. And you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, you is. It's your mate, Fatboy Slim, who just uh, did the bumper, yes. Barry Ashworth is here from the Dub Pistols. Point Blank, Point Blank, I should say, is the uh, name of the uh, CD. It is uh, available in uh, record stores uh, as we speak. Dr. Drew is also here. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. And when we left off, we were speaking to uh, Monica. Monica's uh, 30. So she finally climaxes in her sleep after being for her with her boyfriend for a long period of time. One of her boyfriends. Are you, are you um, in, in your uh, Swedish? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this something that had happened before or just started? Um, of course it's happened before that you come in your sleep, but it's been pretty often lately. But before you could have an orgasm with the guy, right? Of course. <laughs> easy, easy. Okay. That's what I was going for. Are you on any medication? No. Anything changed otherwise? No. Is it the same guy that you have this problem with each time? Mm, no. Um, I'm with somebody else now. And is he a new guy? Yeah, but it's not, no problem with him. I mean, his technique and everything is just great, you know? <laughs> good skills. Forehand is good. <laughs> yeah, he's got good skills. 
I mean, he has no problem at all. I mean, it's just, I don't know. If well, help us. What do you think it is? I have no clue. That's why I'm calling you guys. About some imagination. It's imagination? Yeah. Well, if you say his technique, which is a physical attribute, is fine, and then the only thing that's different is the emotional side of right. it. You either think either she's on medication or something medically is going on with her, or something emotionally different that is uh, maybe, affecting your Maybe body. you're not as into this guy. Or maybe too much doesn't want to be vulnerable. Ooh. No, no, not at all. Maybe it's too much partying when we're having sex. Maybe that's... Uh, the... All right, that's the point. Any substance, the drugs, yeah. chemicals, medication, Medi <laughs> that will affect your ability to function. Well, All right. See, <laughs> so what happens is, is you you get loaded. No, not not in no, not, never alcohol. Oh. No, but you're still loaded. Well, what are you on? Ecstasy. Oh, for Christ's sake! <laughs> Our ecstasy, All Monica. Right. Monica, <laughs> it's a stimulant that prevents you from having orgasm. But I haven't had any problems with that before. Well, you're you're getting down the you're line. Getting old, this, sister. You're getting down the line <laughs> with this drug. All kinds of s can start happening with it. So you, you're telling me I should not use ecstasy anymore? Is there something better out there? <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake, please. Well, uh, an orgasm's better, right? Uh, sometimes, but yeah. it doesn't last for five hours. There's nothing... All right, why don't you get your orgasm first and then drop the X? There is no... That might be a good thing. There is no... That's a sensible solution. There's no free lunch in nature. You do something that makes things uh, extraordinary, they will go extraordinary the other direction as a response to that. There's a consequence to every biological... Mm, circumstance. Do you prefer orgasm or do you prefer the ecstasy? Yeah, well, and that's, uh, mm, that's it, the it's going to get even worse. Do you do? Yeah, true. <laughs> true can't stand. Uh, if 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 the drug was called misery, I think Drew would be for it. No, I wish they. Why don't we just call them all that? Because that I don't know. I don't okay, it. Tracy, too, I can't fight anymore. <laughs> Tracy, you're 28. Yes. What's um, going on? Hey, what's going on uh, with the ecstasy in England? By the way, is it easy to get? Is it cheap? Is everyone into it? Uh, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, it it's is. all over the world. I mean, I, yeah. Do you, it's do, you, do you think it's easier or cheaper? Or, um, and what about the authorities? Uh, the, I mean, yes, yeah, the police. Same. It's so, legal. It's the same. You know, everywhere around the world. But you know, it's readily available anywhere around the world. It doesn't matter what. You know. Place right or anybody so, does it's available it's right. there it's very much part yeah it has so, been part of well so anything is it's prohibition of any kind it's the same thing totally tracy hi what's going on you're 28 yeah um um i self-injure and i'm i'm really trying to get a grip and a handle on this and i don't understand why i do it i've been in therapy for four years you're a cutter? Um, I cut and burn. Are you uh, uh, an addict also? No, but you, um, there's alcoholism that runs in my family. Okay. And I had a blackout drunk once. And okay. It, okay. I mean, I never touched alcohol again. Okay. So you may be an addict. Well, she may have that may have the gene. That gene, but she's not exercising. Right. That's right. That. So uh, you cut on yourself. Where do you cut on yourself? Um, on my arms, um, a couple times on my face. One of the things that cutting and burning does is raise endorphin levels and create a certain level of thrill. And for addicts, that is a particularly rewarding biology. And that might be adding to some of the compulsion to do this. The rest of it is really a psychological process. And there's various theories out there as to why people do this. Uh, there's one book I recommend frequently called Female Perversions, in which she addresses some of the theories as to why women cut, particularly women, t tend to cut. Women cut more than men. Yeah, is it maybe is it trying to gain more control? Yeah, or is it when, or is it when men cut, they just tend to do it more seriously, and <laughs> it's the end. No, me, yes, that's true. And men do also cut for a relief and a thrill and some sort of containment, and also as a way of acting out upon themselves before somebody else does, as a way of mastering that fear. But women, this theory went some. It's something to do with uh, you know losing innocence and menstruation, and uh, I don't know. It, it was kind of a screwy theory, but. All right. Don't recommend it. Really no, I, I, I didn't. Well, but the point is, that nobody has a good theory on this one that I've seen. So. All right, Tracy. Yes. What do you burn yourself with? Um, I have like a thing that you use to start a fire in a fireplace. And yeah, one of those extendo lighters. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? You just hold that over uh, under your arm. 
actually up by my elbow. I have scars up by my elbow. Uh huh. So with the scar tissue, you don't feel it as much? Well, no, I feel it. I, I'm saying that I've burned myself badly enough to give me some scars there. Right. It, see, what happens is I asked my my doctor about this, and he told me he didn't think it was the endorphin theory because the endorphins are released in response to pain. And what I end up doing is I reach a calm plateau. That's what I call it, becoming very calm and tranquil before I even begin to cut. So I I feel a little pain, but not a lot. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, man, Tracy? Yeah? I know this sounds like a harebrained scheme, but um, she's talking about the calm plateau. How about, I know this sounds retarded, but how about getting to like one of those martial arts where you break bricks or something? You know, like, you know those guys who bust a block of ice with their head at halftime of the football game and something like that? I mean, I mean, you need some sort of physical outlet that involves some, some potential pain and overcoming that pain and using mind control and, and, and numbing and all that. Why don't you get into something? Yeah. I had... I was in the military. That didn't help anything. Well, the, you know, the problem with the military is you think you're going to do a lot of shooting, and all you end up doing is eating. And <laughs> That's I, really the bottom line with the military. The, the Tracy's thing, she's clearly describing a sort of a dissociation that she gets, well, think, see, takes her away from her feelings. He did tell me that I'm suffering from dissociative. Yeah, dis yeah, clearly. Put me on another medication. Yeah, clearly, Tracy. Clearly. Well, you sh uh, can you go back and get that medication adjusted or something? What kind of medication? Uh, what, Risperidol, something like that? Zeprexa. Zeprexa, which is a relative of Risperidol. It's a newer version of uh, Risperidol. Oh, baby. Hey, uh, I know this isn't going to help, but could you stop it, please? I mean, I, can you deal with your doctor a little more? Can you deal with the therapist a little more? Can you adjust just, the medication? Just, just stay with it. These are very complex and chronic conditions. But people don't do it into their 60s, do they? No, interesting, and nobody knows why it sort of burns out around forty-five, fifty. No Funny pun intended. You know, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you said you haven't got his skin left to burn. Sarah, we got to go to break. Hold on. You're nineteen. Yeah. Uh, what would cause your brother to have sexual thoughts about you and your brother have sexual thoughts about each other? All right. Okay. Hang on. Don't do anything during the commercial. All right. All right. Well, uh, take a quick break. Barry Ashworth is here from the uh, Dub Pistols. We'll take a break, and then we'll get back to uh, Sarah and figure out uh, what the hell she's thinking. This is Loveline. Loveline will be right back. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Barry Ashworth is here from the Dub Pistols. We'll uh, hear something else off of uh, Point Blank, which is the name of the new CD, real soon. And uh, we'll take some phone calls and we'll do all of that uh, stuff. Blondie is coming in here tomorrow night. Is that right, Ann? Ooh. Is she bringing her dog? I'm in the wrong night. <laughs> you certainly are. I think you can stay here. She was Listen. one of my childhood fantasies. Yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah, she may burst your bubble if you see her now. But no, I've seen her and I saw her when she did a performance on like Chris Evans' show oh, back really? in London just before I left, and it was like probably like one of the. She still looks good. Mm, I'll pass. Oh, just say <laughs> yes, would no. you? I'm going to get cramped tomorrow night. I'm sure she's lovely. I still fancy her. Blondie yeah. will be in here uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Barry Ashworth is Blondie, but um, I haven't checked downstairs. I don't think it's a natural blonde. She's not Natalie Imbruglia anymore. Oh yeah, well. You like that, Natalie? Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of into her, too. No. She, she seems a little stuck up, though. Uh, it's, uh, honestly. Is that true? Do you, know, no, you ever met her? So. Everyone says she's got bad breath, but I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I'm sure that's just another slanderous rumor. Listen, I can put up with a little bad breath, believe me. Think of what she has to put up with. I just put that video on. <laughs> I'd like to give her some bad breath. Listen, um, she could eat uh, a sack of nachos. I wouldn't care as long as I... You, see, you know I what we're talking her. about? Yeah, she is good looking. But, you know, I got to say one thing about her in her videos. She kind of seems like she takes herself just a little too seriously in those things. She's like crying and she's all <laughs> sullen and she's just a little too into her own ass, it's, it seems like. At least from the videos I've seen her I in. I really want to be into her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! All right, Drew? Yeah. 
You ready to rock and roll here? Yeah. Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Um, All right, so you're 19, and uh, you and your brother both have feelings about each other sexually. Okay, this is what happened. He, your OB or obsessive compulsive, um, is it thoughts or is it actions? And he said thoughts. And he said that he has sexual thoughts about, like, me and my two sisters. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell him, but I have the same obsessive thoughts. But I didn't tell him that at the time. Mm -hmm. Are you guys biologically related or stepbrother and sister? Yeah, and it's not something that I would act on. It's just I'll go through phases of like a week or two. <laughs> Hold on a second. A reenactment? I think it's time for a love line uh, reenactment. I'll be playing the part of uh, Sarah the caller. All right, Drew? Drew, you'll be playing the part of yourself. So I think let's I can see manage. if you can get that down tonight. Um, he has obsessive compulsive thoughts about me sexually, and uh, I haven't told him, but I have the same thoughts about him. Are you biologically related or stepbrother and sister? Nah. Anyway, we... <laughs> She, she made a grunt. I'm not she sure. Said, yeah, huh? And so I went on to the. <laughs> hey, Sarah. I said yes. We're related. Yes. Oh yes, it was a definite. <laughs> so that's that's why that's why in the military they use the word affirmative because there's too many uh, guys going. Uh, Listen, is the enemy and say, uh huh? Let, let me get some cl clarification for that. You are not half brothers and sisters. You are full brother and sister. Yes. Okay. And how old is he? Um, he's sixteen. Is any weirdness going on in the family? Um, well, my father was molested by his brother and his father. And did he has he done anything to your brother? Not that I know of. So we, would, we would suggest that something happened. Your, your father was molested. Right. And, and, and by the way, let me, let me say something here. We do a lot of, I wanted to say this the other night, we do a lot of uh -oh. playing the odds, yes. Sarah. And the odds are in favor 60, 70 percent of people who were sexually abused will then sexually abuse or be victims themselves. Not 100 percent, but a substantial percent. That's so, right. so I don't want to condemn people necessarily to this, but we're just playing the odds. And so the odds would be that something happened to your brother, given that he's now manifesting weird stuff that usually comes out from having been sexually abused. How do you know this about your father? Um, it's open. He told us about it. Wow. Well. Interesting, and and I, I'm wondering why. By the way, if it's a good thing or a bad thing, you know what I mean? Did he get into some kind of trouble and have some kind of breakthrough and get clean off the booze or the heroin and then come clean with the family? Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, what happened. He was making amends. Yeah. Yeah. So when he was loaded, he did something to your brother. Well, I talked to him about it. I talked to my father about it. I didn't tell him about myself either. Yeah. Yeah, but. We we would suspect that your father may have done something to your brother. Well, he has made. When we were younger, he wouldn't let. When he turned, my brother turned about twelve, and I turned about you know fifteen. He wouldn't let us like him sleep in my room because he he has asked my brother before, "Are you guys messing around?" R yeah, right. I understand that, but hear hear me, Sarah. I think your father may have diddled around with your brother. Maybe not overtly, but something. Some. And these thoughts that I have. Okay, would you... What about her and her thoughts, you said? I, I know, Sarah, but... but the, uh, well, she's I'm, I'm wondering where hers came from, though, so... Oh, oh I, I see. Yeah. Uh, it, it, nothing ever happened with you? No. Uh, you did grow up in an environment where this guy was sort of the captain of the ship, though. And, and know that, you know, that uh, kids very often take on the parents' preoccupations. In other words, if a parent uh, wishes they had or hadn't done something in their life... Uh, it's an anxiety that gets transmitted to their kids, oftentimes. Uh, so it may be just something that came out of growing up in that environment. Mm -hmm. The fear that you would do something like that. Mm. And if you have your tend to OCD, that fear could become quite an ob obsession. And what, was your father an alcoholic? Yeah, he was. Yeah. And how long ago did he get clean? Um, 10 or 15 years. It's been a long time. He's still sober? Yeah, he's still sober. Wow. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Uh, well, there, there's hope. How many you have... And you have some younger brothers and sisters? One younger brother, two older sisters. Oh, I, I, why, I, why do people like this have to have four or five kids? But you know kids? what? No, this is a hopeful situation. It, it is, but, but still, uh, four or five kids, you're an alcoholic pedophile? <laughs> How many do you need, for Christ's sake? But here's the deal. Oh, is your dad, is he a pedophile or just no, an alcoholic? Just an alcoholic. Yeah. Well, everyone from England's an alcoholic, but it's <laughs> quaint true. there. It's all right. This is true. This guy's drinking a few pints down at the pub. That's He's fine. in that prison a bit. Oh, he did a little prison? A little bit of prison. What'd he do? Uh, the burglary. 
Wow. I, I remember turning up at school at the time when you're young and being very proud, thinking this is your father, and suddenly would turn up outside the school gates and suddenly the police would be chasing him across the field. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Check it out, that's my dad. Oh, look how fast he is. <laughs> look at him run. <laughs> I picture him, too, because he's from England, holding that hat. <laughs> you know that uh, English the hat? Bowler hat. Yeah, he's holding. The bowler. He's probably Pinch holding it suit. while he's running, or holding it on his head while he's running. That's a good sign. With and his the, feet kind of out in front of Bobby him. Bobby with a stick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so quaint that people chase yeah, each other there. Here they just start shooting it's you, or they fly point. a helicopter over you and shoot you. I told you we can walk through Hyde Park in the middle of the night there, and uh, the signs: Beware of pickpockets. <laughs> There, McGruff would have quite a job. Let me tell you something. If there was a park here with a sign that said, Beware of pickpockets, that would be the park you hung out at. We'd look at that as oh. a safe spot, right? Well, it would be like a spoof park. Yeah. It would be. You know, yeah. Take a bite out of Don't crime. they have like the Oliver Twist Park at Disneyland <laughs> right, or something? Right. It would be. It would be, oh, it'd be still got the chimneys in it. It'd be a joke. Honestly. All right, Sarah, but here's why I'm hopeful. Sarah, you, your dad's in recovery and well entrenched in recovery. You guys are communicating about these issues, even though there's a lot of old baggage here. Right. There's a serious openness and capacity for, for relating and talking about these things. Your brother has some issues that are a little over the top, but he's getting treatment for them. This right. is all very positive. Keep the communication lines open. Go also and get some more help if you need it. But I, I'm very hopeful about this situation. And don't drink. Cause, and uh, don't act on these compulsions. Just because you have comp obsessions doesn't mean you must act on them. We're, you know, we have sort of a thing in our culture. It's like if you have a preoccupation, to go go for it. It's yours. Just get it. Get it, get it out. Nothing could be further from the truth. Yes. You act on things you want to do like that, uh, enjoy the consequences. People don't seem to have preoccupations about being astronauts or doctors, yeah, though. Right. Those are the ones they don't follow through on. Right. The, the ones about the uh, threesomes uh, with the hookers and uh, the butt probes, <laughs> those are the ones, those are the dreams that are fulfilled in our society. Thank God. The ones about killing the parents and ODing, those are the, those are the dreams that are all realized. Not the ones about the academic scholarships. Fred. Hi, how are you, gentlemen? You're 21. Good. Yes. Uh, here's my little situation. It's I've kind of had it since uh, I was about 17. And what happens is, is after I climax, what will happen, if it's really good, is uh, my testicles will kind of disappear into my body cavity. Only one side. Both sides. Both sides. That's a, that's a, that's a unusual. Wow. Yeah. And his ears get lower. It's usually <laughs> just one, it's usually just one side that does that. But that's there's a tract there. I mean, your testes come down from sort of the areas of your kidney. Inguinal tract or. Hello? The, the inguinal track? Yeah. Yeah. And it is, a, is a still a potential space there. And some people, when the cremasteric muscle pulls up during ejaculation, it pulls them up into the into the track there. So do I have to go see a urologist and no. get them tightened up? Nope. Just keep pushing them back down after the whole thing? They'll fall down by themselves, right? Uh, well, sometimes, or I'll just push them down. We'll be That's right. Yeah. How do, how, do you push, how do you work them down? Just kind of two fingers and, you know? Where, where do you... Uh, where do you put the two fingers? Uh, kind of, well, if I were a girl, I'd call it my mons. Uh, you where? You, you, you above, just to the, the side of the pubic bone. Right. So up above the penis, where the pubic hair is there? Yes. Right about there, yeah. Yes. And you can actually feel them inside of you? Yeah. They're and, just, they're under, they're in, they're in and the... And you work, them, little, you work them back down? I work them back down. And if you, if you left it alone... And jogged a little bit, they'd go back down too, yeah. Yes. Okay. They'd all drop down. Well, so every time you have sex, you got jogging? Uh, well, I try not to jog anymore. It's a, it's more of a victory lap than it is jogging. <laughs> I'm too tired. All right. Uh, Fred, you're fine. Okay, I have a, a compliment for you guys. This is... Actually have, uh, kind of changed my career track. I work at a at a center for boys that used to be in foster care, and they're about 10 years old, and wow. uh, I take care of them. Congratulations. Well, is everything okay? Uh, they're all on meds, and they've all had a lot of drama happen. You know. Oh, I, yeah. But uh, it's kind of an age where you can do a little bit of good. Uh, I, I really am... Uh, I have a renewed faith in the sort of uh, safety net of our society in, in terms of kids whose parents fail them badly, the teachers, the community service people, the kids that volunteer at camps. There's real potential there to plug up the holes in the dike a little bit. Right. That, that there's, I, I really believe that. And when the government tries to step in and, and, and foist their services on people, it not, it's a load of crap. Nothing works. Okay. But, but you get some caring people from the community involved, and you can get some real connection going. But when you realize that there is a steady stream of, of newcomers, said, that is the thing that kills me. Yeah. I just want to cut it off. I know. I want to cut off the new enlistees mm. in the screwball army. Yeah. 
God, why can't we do that? Speaking of that, let me just go on a quick jag since we decided the other night that was the best part of the show. That's because uh, a caller called in and said it was okay. Uh, Drew and I got a little thing uh, on our table here when we walked in from producer Ann. It's the uh, Rock the Vote, which has uh, been a very popular campaign. I think it started on, I guess, MTV, MTV yeah. about, uh, you know, we're uh, vehemently against anything that's on MTV other than our show. But it started on MTV, what, was it about two or three years ago? Oh, no, no, I think that was six, five years, six ago? years ago. It was the first Clinton campaign. It's been out for a while. There you go. Mm -hmm. One Another good argument uh, to do away with this Rock the Vote. And basically, this Rock the Vote is just a bunch of uh, guitar-playing, pot-smoking idiots sitting around trying to beg everyone to, everyone to vote. Please vote. Could you just vote? Hi, I'm Eddie Vedder. How about voting? <laughs> we get a bunch of idiots from rock bands, and believe me, we talked, um, with the exception of uh, Barry Ashworth from the Dub Pistols. I don't vote. Uh, good. These, a lot of these rock, these, these rock stars are amongst the dumbest people in the world, everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you what a rock star's life is. You go around on a bus, and you bang underage women when you're high. That's not dumb. That, how can that be dumb? They may be smart with their own lives. But that it, is it, pretty smart. You drink a lot. You shag on the grave. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you shag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you eat, do. eat pizza, you drink beer, you shag, you have a good time. Stay up late. That's not dumb. Yeah, okay. It's a good life. It's a rich life. It's a wholesome life. But what makes you an authority on voting? And please, everybody, stop trying to get idiots to vote. I don't vote. Here's, here's the thing with voting. People are appalled that only half the country turns out for elections. And then they get really disgusted when it's some sort of local election. They go, oh, only 39% of the registered voters, this, that, and the other. This country has close to 300 million people in it, okay? If half of them vote, that's 150 million people. That's plenty. Plenty. There's already a million more idiots voting than we need. I'd, I'd rather let three guys vote. Three smart guys. Just exactly what we're supposed to vote for. I don't. I have no idea. Uh, any kind of election. Which lawyer? The, the point. Yeah, right. Wh which, which corrupt which lawyer, lawyer are we voting for uh, this week? Are you registered to vote, Adam? No. Oh, oh wait I a minute. I didn't think so. Wait a minute. I might be. I, someone may have done it for me. Oh, that's great. Someone right. did it for you. I didn't it's vote. so difficult to do by yourself. But here's the deal. Do we have to scrape every pathetic stoner in this country off of their beanbag and drag them down See, Mike's to about, the polling Mike's place? Mike's about to get up on his Lycus pulpit here. Let me just say, Mike, just before you go nuts about this, and I'm not saying I necessarily agree with Adam, but yes, but, but here's, here's something I thought was interesting. If you ever read any of the stuff from the Founding Fathers, they had great concerns about giving the vote to a lot of people. They, they, not just oh, I still don't think chicks should vote. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, I mean, they're, they're, the point is, we, we, obviously, they went too far one direction. I mean, they had all sorts of disenfranchised people. But how much, the, the one thing I thought was important that, that Thomas Jefferson said is that for, for a, a population to govern itself, it has to be well-educated. Right. And that's where we totally screwed up. What do we if want everybody a bunch was of well yeah, you know, don't know well the issues education. voting? What's that? You know for well that, you know, most people, they've always tried, especially in the UK, to undereducate people at certain classes, definitely. Well, here they've tried to the man keeping you up. down? Definitely. They didn't know you were going to get a rock band, though, and no, travel exactly. the United States and talk about it. I know. <laughs> I didn't count on that. <laughs> Listen, the point is, is there's plenty of people voting already. And the people, here's the deal. Here's who I went to vote, the people that want to vote. If you don't want to vote, I don't want you to vote. You understand? Perfect. It's done. It solved itself, everybody. Let's move it's on. It's just so funny that you don't vote, yet you bitch so much about the government. He's taking. He's going to take over. Don't worry. I'm taking himself. over. I'm not doing it by a You're vote. End up in a padded room. Please, uh, cast a vote for uh, Clinton or, or uh, Bush or uh, you know, it's a dull. It's all. It's all the same. It was your national president's day yesterday, wasn't it? Monday. Uh, Monday. 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 Yeah. I was thought everyone should get in a Monica Lewinsky dress and sort. Of Press yeah. around us. I, guess. <laughs> I know, I know. You, you people, you, you people in England, you must, you must, you must be laughing your uh, your arse off at us hysterically. Yes, and uh, we must seem like the biggest pack of idiots in the world. You know what, though? Well, I mean, okay. we have it in our own. I mean, our MPs get dressed up and they get, but they don't just get caught. The uh, right honourable lady little, yeah. from Hanover. Yeah, <laughs> Steve Milligan getting caught in women's underwear tied to a bed. Yeah, you um, know. Yeah, they seem to go a little bit more over the board. 
once in a while they run one of those uh, House of Parliament uh, things on C-SPAN, and uh, it's a bunch of old codgers in powdered wigs mm. standing up, and the person gets two syllables into something, and everyone starts yelling at them. That's <laughs> oh, what I like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, Hold on. They heckle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yell them down. <laughs> they shout the guy down. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a bunch of blue bloods with a ton of education, and they're all in their 70s. And some guy stands up and says, I believe that the people of Hounslow sit down! <laughs> <laughs> but um, but they're, all, they're all absolutely shag maniacs. They're always getting caught with their trousers down. They're always in all sorts of trouble. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's just crazy. I, I think know. there was one MP in, in England at the moment who's just been caught coming back from Amsterdam. And oh, he's really? married with kids, and they've just caught him with cocaine and hardcore gay porn videos. Right. And, oh, he was beautiful. Still, and he was still trying to stand his line. Yeah. And yeah. I, I bet he was one of the guys who was speaking out against <laughs> pornography and drugs the week before. Without yes, you cannot doubt. protest too much. His family's standing behind him, though. Huh. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> Probably a couple guys behind him, too. Nick. Yeah. You're 27. How you doing, guys? I like that energy, Nick. You guys got the best show going. Thank you. I uh, have a comment for Adam real quick. I was so ready to praise you for your uh -oh. appearance on Politically Incorrect yesterday. Right. Then you pulled Until you watched it. Do. Until oh. I what? The crap with the Mountain Dew. Oh, the the, the commercial? Now go pick me up some Dew so we can oh. play. Jesus, Mike, please. I have to relive that? <laughs> it's like the, the Bruder films. Sorry, Adam. All right. Yeah, it was pretty funny on that Politically Incorrect last night. Uh, the host is such a pussy and, you know... It's I like Bill Maher. so hard to be politically correct. Oh. He's not politically correct. No, Bill. Bill's great, but that Vanessa Redgrave is such a blowhard. So offended. My God, she didn't shut her trap the entire show. I was watching it last night. She just blew and blew and blew. Yeah. My God, shut up once in a while, woman. Let, let, let someone else have a turn. But you did a good job. Oh, thanks, Nick. So anyway, my problem is um, trying to end a, a two-year relationship with my ex-girlfriend, and uh, I'm finding it hard to kind of put it behind me because, um she had she shared with me that she had a lot of physical and sexual abuse and she really doesn't have anybody else to talk to her mother denies everything everybody in her family denies it right i'm kind of i want to get on with my life but i can't put her behind and you know i don't know it's just i last week we broke or two weeks ago we broke up and i told her i thought it'd be better if we just don't talk yeah Otherwise i wouldn't be able to get on with my life yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, that's a bitch. Is she, is she, um, she, she's a handful because she's had that abuse and everything? Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it just hasn't been there the last few months. And yeah. But see, you got, you got dredged into the enmeshment and now you can't, you can't disconnect yourself. You can't get out. But she's done, right? Yeah. She, I know, I, I accept that she's done with it and I want to be done with it, but uh, I'm just having a hard time. No, he there. broke up with her, Drew. It was mutual. She's done. He, he'd still be in. Oh, you would? Yeah. Oh, okay. See, uh, all right, listen, Nick. Her to get help. You know, right, yeah. She just, she putting it off. She buries herself in her schoolwork and her job, and it's just, you know. Hey, hey, Nick. Yeah. Listen to me. This one's over. That's fine. There'll be others. She's too big a handful anyway with this wild pass of hers. You understand? Saka. Yeah, it's trouble. Yeah. Nick, I, you, you gotta you gotta use some strength there. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me, but it's just hard to. <laughs> I know, but listen, we're, we're we're agreeing with everyone because they're right. Nick, it's all built on a fantasy. There was no real relationship there. This is a, this is a very chaotic person. No, really, that's the way these relationships are with borderlines. And you're describing someone with a, like a borderline personality disorder, and it's uh, it's a lot of chaos, a lot of drama, but it's all built on fantasy. There's okay. not a real relationship there. We're telling you to move on. When we come back, who are we going to speak to, Drew? Uh, what this? Uh, Jay? I'll talk about your hair. Uh, has a hairy back. What can I tell him about hair removal? Oh, yeah. I was going to get some laser laser hair removal on my neck, but I have been so damn busy. I haven't been able to get around to that. Uh, not for uh, not because I have an unusually hairy neck, but I get a neck rash and I'm trying to get rid of those hairs. Yeah, you guys understand, right? Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline, I'll be right back.
All right, Drew. I should really get paid more than you for this job because I realized you ate an entire slab of pizza while I was ranting about voting. Maybe you shouldn't rant so much. All right, well, maybe you should talk and let me eat a little more. Maybe, maybe you, should... you should vote. All right. Mike, you want me to come to that college of yours and uh, say anything to those kids or not? All right, be quiet then. Are well, you going to go over there? I'm not going to go, but I want to use it as a threat. <laughs> I mean, lead Mike to believe that you would. Right. Barry Ashworth is here from the uh, Dub Pistols. Um, Point Blank is the name of the uh, CD. We've decided that we like Barry. <laughs> We're having a good time with him. And it can stay until uh, actually after the show. Which of course, good. we'll be gone by then. Drew, uh, if you don't know, and Drew, I was laughing my ass off standing out in the parking lot the other night watching you scrape the air dam of your car once again on the street. And I said to the uh, guard who was standing next to me, you know what? Or maybe it was Engineer Mike. If he stepped on the brake for just what would be essentially uh, two um, two revolutions of a, of a butterfly's wings, uh, two flaps of the wings, you wouldn't scrape up the front of your car. But you cannot spare the second point two that it takes to slow down and then reaccelerate. That ain't thinking, brother. Please, true. Jay. Hi. You're twenty. Long time listener, first time caller. Great. Um, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty hairy guy, and I've heard you guys talk about sometimes about how to get rid of hair. I was wondering if there's anything permanent that I could do. You, you can't say anything while I'm chewing, can you? This guy's you, sit you want away from me. I was going to ask you this. Do you, you want to drink that down? I'll pour a split this with you. What, what's for dessert? You know, hey, Ann, we need a soda fountain in here. <laughs> this place should be like a feral. <laughs> True needs a buffet and a cot. And a ball. Barry needs a bar. Finish, drink that up, and I'll give you some of this. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Why can't you drink it and then dump it into my glass? Do you want me to put my stink all over that and then dump it in your glass? Oh, you're going to put it up your ass? You're going to take a <laughs> sip off it. All right. I don't care. Uh, hairy back. Hair you could do worse than Dr. Drew germs, couldn't you, ladies? There, there, oh, are, yeah. there are several uh, types of hair removal things. The, the popular one right now for the large areas of... of uh, Large hair suit areas, large hairy areas, is the flash removal, and it's all sort of a laser technique, and it's very effective and uh, probably pretty expensive. What, it, what, what area is this? Your back? It's like lower back and stomach. I don't want to frighten you, Jay, but if you're making this call at age twenty, <laughs> you're going to be in real trouble. You're not going to be able to find your prick at thirty-five. <laughs> you're not. You. you you will not. You'll look like that uh, monster in the Bugs Bunny cartoon with the tennis shoes. I'm a lot tougher on myself than I think I should be. Oh, okay. So you're one of these pretty boy types who has to have all hair removed? Um, yeah, it would, I, it would just be nice. You know, I'd like to be able to, to not wear a shirt and not have a big patch of hair sticking out. Well, here's the thing about hair. Uh, uh, some in the right place is, is no problem. Do you, do you need to be... Are you exceedingly hairy now? Um, it's just, it's a, it's really odd because, like, my upper back is, there's no hair at all, and then my lower back, I have this patch that kind of sticks out above my pant line, and this then... This is the Corolla syndrome. Well, that's what I got. Really thick on my stomach, but then it's, like, really light on my chest, you know, and... Right. That's so upside down. It's a little irregular. It's really ugly. Right. Is that a centaur, or what, what kind of animal would that be? Centaur? Is, 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 you guys have, like, phone numbers of... about centaur? You mean half man, half horse? Yeah. Couldn't the audition for... The part of Chewbacca in the next Star Wars movie or something later on. <laughs> Barry said a few beers he's digging into the collars. You know the the. Uh... Hey, hey Jay, what if you just what what if you got one of those buzzers? You know those things that the uh, barber, the electric one, the barber Sheer. uses to trim the back of your neck. Doesn't it grow back thicker? No, I don't think it grows back thicker. It just grow you keep back. Cutting it back, I know. I hey, like have gills that shave. It won't grow back. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, just buzz it off. Uh, hey, there you go. Hey, Jay. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's the deal. Okay. Where do you live? What city? Torrance. Torrance. All right. So you go down to like a Thrifties or Save On? Yeah. Or any of those places? And you get one of those wall, uh, I think it's a W-A-H-L or something, uh, electric shear things. And they have like a few attachments with it and stuff. And you just plug it in and you just buzz that area off. I do it to my ass like uh, twice a year. <laughs> you do it, Adam? Yeah. Wow. Actually, uh, I, I get my buddies to do it. I thought you did that once. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you routinely do it? Doesn't no. Have to do it for you. No, it's just a buddy of mine gave me 20 bucks to do it once. I said, why not? He gave you 20 bucks? Yeah. You were a rent boy once. You don't understand? He gave you 20 bucks to allow him to shave your ass? He was a shagadeliac. <laughs> Shagging for England. Yeah, yeah, gave me 20 bucks. Write it. Oh, race circuit, I thought. Oh, no, no. It's good. Listen. Good fun? Drew, Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. See, Drew, you grew up with a bunch of uh, hemophiliacs wearing ascots, and that's why you don't understand. That's right. You I'll grew admit up with... we didn't shave each other's ass and lo- or look forward to that I as a source of fun or pay each other. Drew's, Drew's ears. For the like... opportunity, the honor. Shaving your buddy, man, that's sick. Let, let me you explain. I mean, you me... should call up and we'll talk to you. Let me explain. You want me to go in the other room? Let me explain Drew's buddies. Uh, let me try Drew's buddies' idea of a good practical joke. They um, they took the they'd take a guy's like a cello bow and they'd switch it out for his violin bow or something. That's a that's a knee slapper in Drew's circle. But how did you lie? Did you lie in your stomach? Or did you stand up? Because <laughs> I lay there and wept no, while seriously. he mounted me. <laughs> no, here's what happened. Was he good? I was sitting around at my friend Ray's house. Uh, it was probably uh, actually his apartment. I don't know. It was, uh, could have been 10 years ago, maybe 8 years ago. And I was just sitting around and we're watching TV. And Ray's the kind of guy who will offer you money to do stuff. Humiliating stuff. Like, would you take a million dollars to... Yeah, yeah, except for he really puts the money up, but it's not a million bucks. Like, what else has he had you do for 20 bucks? <laughs> I have... Well, he he uh, shaved uh, my friend Dave Cravens for 50 bucks. Shaved what? Dave, um... Shaved what? What could you get I'll, a score of five from you? I'll explain. Dave, how much? A score of five? 25? A 25? 20, 25 you probably get your lower half shaved. Yeah. <laughs> my my friend Dave Cravens is uh, a a big hairy guy. You if you you seen Dave? Oh, yeah. The guy looks like, like a pit, looks yeah. like a pit bull. He's got a lot of hair all over his body, his back, his front, everywhere. Ray decided uh, it'd be a funny idea to shave Dave. Shave him all the way down. Shave him down. So he paid him fifty bucks, and we had a shave Dave party. We sat out in the uh, backyard of Drew of uh, Drew of Ray's apartment. He squirted him with a hose. People sat around and drank beer, played radio. And a big party gathered. All right. And then he shaved him. What did he do with you? And everyone took turns, you what, know? What else has he paid you to do? <laughs> His poor Asian neighbor started walking by, these poor little, like, geisha women. And he, he he's geisha, I mean, he gave me, forced them. He put the razor in their hand and forced. <laughs> I, I shared the videotape one day. Poor Dave sitting in his underpants on a stool out in the back this of a the place man, in North Hollywood. This has to be on the man show. I, I don't know how manly this was. Anyway, he said, uh, 20 bucks, I shave your ass. Uh, I said, what else has he had you do besides I said, shave? fine. Huh? What else has he had you do for money? Uh, that was it. Is it? That was it. Nothing else you want to share with us? Why, do you got more tape? I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't. That was it. I, I tell you. Right. One time uh, he, he uh, paid a guy 10 bucks to eat a, a giant wad of that uh, musabi or whatever. Oh, yeah. Wasabi. What, wasabi. That, that green, really hot stuff. We were eating... We were uh, eating sushi, and it was sitting there. I gave him 10 bucks. Or maybe someone gave Ray 10 bucks, and he ate the whole thing. Yeesh. You don't do that stuff? So, uh, so you shaved your butt. Real guys you, pay other guys to do humiliating things. Did you things. lie on your stomach and you just shaved yeah. your ass? No, I stood in his, uh, stood in was like a good? bathtub or you something. Stood, did you enjoy it? I didn't want the hair to go. Wait, the hair's going to go. You just stood just, there buck naked and he just took a shear to you. Back to hair. Yeah, my ass. How yeah. far around did he come? <laughs> this is bizarre. How far around did he You're sick. <laughs> You're gay. Listen, <laughs> your ass, you know, they call it a moon. There's a there's a dark side and a light side. He didn't get to the dark side. He, he was on the back side. What about Eastern European girls? They're generally quite hairy. Yeah, he probably Eastern would have paid Europe. them 20, too. Uh-huh. True. You, you uh, find that bizarre? Positively. Oh, really? Well, I knew the guy well. What the hell? What? Was well, I scared he was going to like blow me or something? around shaving me. Y- there's a fetishistic quality to all this. Man. Barry, you don't let your mate shave you? No. Kelly. Yeah. 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 What's going on? You, you hang out with I me, shave Barry. Girls. I shaving. shave girls. I'm really into, like, you know, I like girls that have been shaving. Definitely. Uh, Kelly? Um, yeah, Adam, I had a comment for what you said the other day about why chefs get so much trim. Yeah. I had a couple of theories. I wanted to... All right, go ahead. I'd be interested in knowing. Okay, well, first of all, um, I, I went to cooking school when I was younger, about 17, and uh, the atmosphere there is very sexist and machismo. I think that that's where they kind of start getting that attitude and I weighed the cheese mo into the cooking yeah well I, I waited tables for about nine years and I dated a lot of cooks mm-hmm. I think that restaurants kind of draw like single people who like to party and I think that's where a lot of like the flirtation starts and I think that also waitresses are mostly higher in their looks 
and the only men around are the uh, the chefs. Well, that's that's a decent point. Except we we see these actresses and things, and they're all dating chefs. Oh right, that's what you said the other day. Yeah. No, within restaurants too. There's a lot of dating. And yeah, no, but but, but that yeah, that's a that's good. I, I understand. She's not making my point, but it's another point which isn't bad. Which yeah. is, you work around a bunch of good-looking waitresses. The guy who manages a restaurant's always gay. And the bus boys are just some poor guys from Guatemala, who are like riding their bikes home and stuff. So you're you're pretty much king of the hill there. Well, plus also a lot of the cooks I know. I don't know why this is, but they're very very moody. At the same time, they're very charismatic. Well, you have to be moody to be a chef because every once in a while you have to storm out when someone insults you by uh, asking for some A one sauce. Uh-huh. And they all do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I decided to share it with, with thanks, you. Thanks, Kelly. Have sex with a chef? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Oh, I'm sure, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, you've had sex with chefs, right? Mm-hmm. Now, were these chefs or just guys with hairnets and slinging hash? No, it's, it's nicer restaurants I've worked in. They, right. You know, chefs. It, it, actually, in the restaurant? You had sex in the restaurant? Um, no. Just, you know, making out a couple times, but never I had any sex there. That's boring. I, I think there's some uh, there's something women are attracted to by guys who... Uh, there's something sensual they find about food. All that food stuff, you know, where they're like uh, licking whipped cream off of them and feeding them, blindfolding them and feeding them. Hey, and you go for that, wouldn't you? See, to me, that's nonsense. That makes no sense. Now, on the other hand, 20 bucks to get your ass shaved. Miles bars. There's a place. Confectionary chocolate. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the one I everyone tries. Uh, what do you do with the Mars bar? Uh, you know, it's just generally used as, I guess, as a um, same thing you do with a big black memo. Uh, that's a uh, vibrator? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you put it up yeah, there? put it up there and then you yeah, eat afterwards. Bit dodgy if you have... You don't have me, a marathon bar Snickers, but ends up a bit peanuts everywhere. It just doesn't look good at the end. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what's going on over there in England? <laughs> uh, is that Louis or, or Louise? Or Louise. Yeah. All right, what's going on there, Louise? Um, I was seeing this guy and... My roommate basically just, like, stole him from me. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that's good. And you're still living with your roommate? Yeah. Okay, so maybe a um, little gay triangle. That's good. Barry Ashworth is here. Barry's uh, come out of his shell, thankfully. And he's willing <laughs> to talk openly about uh, his uh, his uh, chocolate and sexual fantasies. <laughs> he's from the Dub Pistols. Dr. Drew's here. He's dismayed at my activities. And when we come back, we'll uh, finish off with uh, Luis and his um, gay dilemma. Call 1-800-LOVE-191 to broadcast your problems to the public. Love Line will be right back. Love Line on 92.1 KFMA. Hey, it's Love Line. Barry Ashworth is here. From the Dub Pistol. Point Blank is the name of the new CD. We're going to hear something else off of that. And I guess uh, seeing as how Drew is getting himself a rub down in the next room and has no real intention of coming back into the studio, we'll just go to the song now. Is that what you're thinking, Drew? Sure you don't want to go? Drew, why don't you come back? We'll go to that call. Then you can go back and we'll play the song. I'm in pain. (laughs) My breasts hurt. All right. All right. I feel bad for Drew. So, from... The Dub Pistols. This one is Unique Freak. That would be Unique Freak off of uh, Point Blank. From the Dub Pistols, and Barry Ashworth is here from the band. Drew, I know when you're getting your groove on and uh, you're uh, getting high on the X uh, at at one of those rages. (laughs) Rave? (laughs) Rages. Drew's hip into the rave scene, I can tell you that right now. Bang at it, as we say in England. What are they called? Bang at it. Is it the same? Is, is uh, you know, here they have these raves, these uh, secret parties yeah, everyone goes yeah. to and uh, gets high on and dances all night and then the cops uh, break them up. Right. Did, did they have that in England? Yeah, I mean, it's been going for many it's, it's, it's a whole part of youth culture in England now and it's been going, you know, for many, many years, probably from 87. And initially, when I mean, at the, when the start of the scene, I started, I spent a whole summer out in IB for in 87 then came back and ecstasy still wasn't illegal at that time. They hadn't become you know the formula hadn't right. been sort of 
and yeah, I mean, everywhere it just broke out. It's just insane. And we still have them in England, but it's not the same as, you know, nowadays it's, you know, the underground, it's become very much a big corporate sort of business. It's just everywhere you go now, it's just, you know, that is part and parcel of your culture. You know, what's weird is the, the music is perfect for the drug or the drug's perfect for the music. I mean, you wouldn't want to listen to some guy picking on a banjo or blowing on a cider jug if you were high on X. No, but, you need some energy. Yeah, you need some energy. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect marriage. Oh, uh, Luis. Yeah. Okay, so you're 19. Yeah. You're gay. Yeah. You have uh, a roommate. Yeah. He fooled around on behind your back with, was it your boyfriend or a guy you're going out with? The guy I was seeing, I'm like, the guy I was seeing, I like, I'm not seeing him anymore. Mm-hmm. But what happened was, like, the day that I saw them, like, I didn't see them do anything, but I went out, they fell asleep in the living room, I guess. And I went out there and went to go see, like, you know, why he wasn't asleep in my bed. And my roommate had his arm around him, and they were both asleep. So I was like, wait, don't jump to conclusions. So I didn't. And when I woke up, like, the next day, my roommate saw, um, I don't want I mean, not my roommate, the guy I was seeing, said that he didn't want to see me anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, listen, first off, anytime anyone falls asleep in a living room, there's something going on. And now you got two guys. Come on. Something had to have gone on. So you're not seeing the guy anymore. No. But you're wondering whether to confront your roommate? Yeah, my roommate's seen him, and he's lying about oh, it. Oh, your roommate is seeing him. Yeah, and he's totally lying about it. Like I. How do you know he's seeing him? Like, I, yeah, like, I let it go, because this happened, like, three weeks ago, and I let it go, and last night, like, he still denies it, and last night, um, my friend saw him with him, so. Okay. Like, you know, what should I do? I, like, live with my roommate and right. I don't know what to do. All right, well, you're angry at your roommate. Oh, yeah. But you're, you're done with the guy. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. Good. It's kind of tough. It's like... Kick his it, ass. <laughs> his arse, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I mean, here's... here's there's two, two lines of uh, logic here. One is, is the guy's sort of shown his colors. Maybe he's not the greatest friend. The roommate. Yeah, the roommate. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you live with him. Sometimes it's a bitch when you stir things up with someone you have to live with. Yeah. yeah. I, I would... Uh, can I've, been, I've, I've lived with people, and then I've ended up... I have done it myself. Gone off with someone, with one of my friends. You screwed around with one yeah, of their birds? Yeah, regret it totally, and it's totally out of order. Sometimes there's just an pull and you can't help yourself. It, it, it will happen eventually if there's enough booze or drugs, <laughs> and enough, <laughs> enough late nights, and enough people passing out around the house. <laughs> something's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've ended up in trouble, definitely. Yeah, that, that can happen. Uh, Luis, yeah. maybe, you, I don't know if you're ever going to really forgive this guy. It's going to be tough. He's going to be dating him. You're going to be aware of it. Maybe I ought to just think about a new roommate. Yeah. That, like, I don't know. That, see, what what do I move out? Because, I mean, this is his, like, not his place, but he, like, was here first. Well, the, the problem is, is you can confront him. He'll deny it. You, you won't get any satisfaction out of it. Meanwhile, he'll be sneaking around going out with this guy. You're going to have to move. And you're, you're going to have some feeling good either, are you? You're just gonna I could you. care less. It's just that he's lying about it. All right, I, I understand. But listen, I don't care who lies to me about anything unless I care. So you do care. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Now, if you could not care, that'd be great. All right, S happens. He's going out with this other guy. You move on with your life. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? <laughs> no, like, I want, I want, I don't know whether to confront him or what. You know what I mean? The All right. Okay. Why don't, why don't you just say this? Listen, I like you. You're my roommate. I want things to go smoothly, but I got these feelings, and I'm just trying to be straight up with you and tell you what I, I want to get it off my chest. And see if you don't can't clear the air with him. Uh -huh. There's a fantastic plan. I don't know. My whole thing about roommates is uh, I've had many, many a roommate in my life, and I wish with a lot of them I just folded my hand. You know what I mean? Don't stay in and let the pot get bigger. You have no hand. Just throw it down on the table, lose your ante, and move on. And the ante would be, I don't know, the cleaning deposit or whatever it would be equivalent to. All right, let me just see if there's someone's been on hold for way too long. Uh... Ashley. Hi. Hi. Uh, 16, boyfriend found out you're two months pregnant. Yeah. And won't have anything to do with you. And we don't have enough time to get into this. Ashley? Yeah. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. You're going to talk to a uh, phone screen share. We'll take it first tomorrow night, all right? Okay. All right. Drew, you feel guilty just leaning back there and having me pull the show along like a mule? Dennis? <laughs> Dennis? 
You're, you're 15, best friend. Uh, you can do this off the Girlfriend man. against uh, Dennis. What can you do? All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow, too, all right? Hang on. Don't don't uh, hang up. And uh, we'll get Zach, too. He's been on hold for a half hour. The rest of you can uh, screw yourself. That uh, wow. puts an end to another uh, famous Love Line show. Barry, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, we didn't mention about uh, we are going to do an extra Love Line at the uh, La Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Barry wants some chicks to come to his hotel. <laughs> Should have got to that earlier. I forgot about that. You know, I'm just going to extend the show a little bit. Uh, hey, go out and uh, support the Dub Pistols and uh, go out and support <laughs> Barry and uh, his sex habit back Room 102. What is the, uh, what's the name of your hotel again? Le Park, just on West Knoll. Le Park? Le Park. P-A-R-K. Le Park, it's got a nice swimming pool and a jacuzzi and we can get out there and we can discuss yeah, any see. sexual problems any, 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 any of you girls have got. You know, he's not my cup of tea, but I can see where a lot of women would find him attractive. So, uh, ladies or gents? No, we don't. Just, just the ladies. Yeah. Go find uh, Barry at LaPard. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so. Just oh, go ahead and, uh, you know, I thought he was going to plug his album, but I forgot he just wanted to plug something. Uh, Point Blank is the name of his uh, CD. Go out and get it or uh, see Barry tonight at the uh, Park Hotel. He'll give it to you in person. And you'll get it. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! <laughs> this is from Love Line. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And you're probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station.